My guest, Dayo Kusami, qualified as a lawyer in 2001. He became partner energy and projects at the law firm Templars in 2009. In 2011, he joined the corporate world as group general counsel and company secretary of Atlantic Energy, an upstream oil and gas company where he worked out of offices in Lagos, Zurich and London. In 2015, he went on to serve as an executive director with an indigenous oil service company providing marine logistics support to energy companies in Nigeria and the wider West African region. And in 2019, he rejoined Templars and has built a sterling reputation as one of Nigeria's leading oil and gas lawyers. I started the interview by getting his comments on the PIA as passed and the committee set up to implement the law. Well, I, I think the fact that it's been passed is progress. It's taken a long time and it's finally here. And I usually say it's better a bad law than no law, because whatever faults there are, we can improve with regulation and amendments. But it's here, so it's given certainty to the industry. That's the most important thing. Regarding the implementation committee, I think it's a smart idea, because often the case is that you have a law passed and there is a transition period with no one actually guiding the boat. So the fact that you have a transition committee that will be, I assume, staffed with those who have industry expertise and knowledge, I think it shows the political will to not just pass it, but get it through and implement it properly. So we would expect uh, industry experts from the government, from NNPC, DPR, the regulators. I think it would also be helpful if we had, uh, and I'm not putting myself up for it, but lawyers as well, and people in private as well, who can liaise and interact with the government so you're having a holistic and realistic uh, implementation of the PIA. What for you are the highlights of this law as passed? What are the key things that maybe excite you? You know, it's been a long time coming. It's been, it's been a very long time coming. The first time I reviewed a draft of the PIB as it then was, was 16 years ago. And for a while I said it would never happen. So again, the fact that it's passed, fantastic. Details, the gas, right? You've probably heard it before we say it, uh, but Nigeria is not an oil company, it's a gas. We're literally sitting on an ocean of gas. And the PIA has a number of fiscal incentives, including the tax-free period that you can get of up to 10 years. Fiscal. Fiscal regime, yeah. Okay. So um, you could get tax-free uh, incent fiscal incentives, a tax-free period. Um, there are utilization uh, benefits that are embedded in the PIA, that for me is one of the most uh, exciting things because that is what can kickstart uh, a proper development of our gas industry. One of the topical areas that's been up for debate is these um, oil companies, major oil companies are complaining about taxes and royalties and then the pushback against the right percentage due to host communities. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? So there are two different things. Let's start with the host communities, right? Um, it's become a political issue because as you know, uh, the PIA, uh, assuming that what has actually what will be gazetted is what we saw as the final version, it gives 3% to the host communities. Which There's some people have argued is not enough. Correct. And some might say it's too much. So that's where it becomes a political thing. I don't think it goes down to the quantum. Okay. It's how it's managed. Um, if you recall, the NDDC collects 3% of all oil companies' operating expenditure, right? But there have been questions as, has it been appropriately utilized? Yeah. So if you had 10% and it's not properly utilized, and you had 3% that was properly managed and utilized, I'd rather have the 3%. Okay. So I feel that people might always want more, but I think the focus uh, should be on proper utilization. To give you an example, the GMD of NMPC said, if you use last year's operating expenditure uh, of oil companies, what that 3% translates to is $500 million wow. a year. Now, if you had $500 million a year invested in host communities, properly managed and distributed, you would see a remarkable, remarkable difference. Mm -hmm. So that for me, it's more how it's applied. Um, to the first question regarding taxes, um, I'm a corporate lawyer and I can tell you I don't like taxes. Companies don't like taxes, but there's that old saying, the only thing certain is death and taxes. So a company, while I'm sympathetic to the fact that they should not be overly taxed, uh, if you're operating in a high value environment, taxes must be paid. The important thing is um, they must be streamlined, open, transparent, and they must be applied properly. Um, so 
if going back to my point of gas utilization, the tax rate has actually been reduced, right? If you look at uh, on crude oil operations, they've introduced a hydrocarbon tax, which in addition to CETA, if you add both of them, is actually less than the current regime now. So while the government take home, I recognize in some instances can be higher, in most cases, the taxes themselves have been reduced. There's also this um, issue of state governors threatening to go to court, alleging that the PIA violated the principle of separation of powers. I, I'm sure you've heard about, about that. Have. They argue that the act will deny the states their fair share from the Federation. Right. What do you make of all of those arguments? I feel that um, there will be a number of challenges and interpretations of the PIA. You, there is not one law anywhere in the world that everyone is happy about and a number of them will be challenged. Right. A number of them, I think people forget that a number of laws come out and regulations are issued afterwards to clarify different points. But to your specific question, every single governor um, has a responsibility to be able to get as much revenue as That's they can for their own state. So I understand their position, but it needs to be balanced with the whole national good as well. I'm not really in a position because each governor says the different things, but it goes back to the argument of uh, derivation and littoral states. You really should, and I believe that personally, uh, if not professionally, that um, the, the communities where we do get the crude oil and gas from should be amongst the most developed in, in the country. And where that is not the case, I think that's a travesty of justice. So I can understand it from that point of view. But if everyone says, if everyone got what they wanted, no one would get every, anything at all. So you would say, shit your swords, don't go to court yet. Let's see how it plays out. I would say, let's see how it plays out. Um, there is only a limited amount of money. But here's the thing. If the PIA does what I think it will do, right, the revenues are going to go up so high that that so-called small piece would be a small piece of a larger pie. So you have a situation where, whereas the governors could be complaining that, oh, we're only getting $100 under the PIA. If the PIA spurs investment and that triples, then do they really have a cause to complain? I would argue not. I know that there are a lot of registers that I am not familiar with. Right. There's this one I heard about fossil fuel. Yes, and that the fuel. world is moving away from it. Correct. And so some people say that this PIV perhaps is coming too late. Well, better late than never. And um, sure, it should have been passed uh, 10 years ago. But what if it wasn't passed 10 years from now? I think um, cynics say that uh, it should have been passed. Um, optimists say, well, it has been passed. Fossil fuels, like I said, the PIB has extensive significant provisions for just gas utilization. So while gas could be deemed a derivative because you have associated and non-associated gas of fossil fuel, it's not a pure play fossil fuel. Crude oil is, right? So gas is cleaner energy and there are arguably more provisions and incentives for gas utilization than crude oil. So I would disagree with those that say it's fossil fuel focused. Uh, because it's actually forward-looking. The PIA is actually a forward-looking... Uh, Legislation. Is, thank you. Yeah. So, so having, having looked at the act, yeah. there, have you identified any gaps? Oh, so well, let, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. It's, it's, it's the easiest thing to do is to criticize, well, right? Yeah. So I will tell you this. Based on, um, we've done maybe 5, 10 reviews in the last month for different clients. Before Obst it was passed. Before it was passed. Yeah. Because... We sent out a client note. We like to keep our clients up to date with something we call the Templars Legislative Watch, right? We tell them this is a law. This is when we expect it to come out. So we sent out a note saying, in our opinion, the PIB is going to come out summer of 2021, which generated interest. And they say, okay, how is it going to affect our business? Now, what would be a gap for a midstream, upstream or downstream are entirely different. There are gaps, but I tell you what, uh, the Petroleum Act, 60 years old, had gaps, right? The most current upstream uh, petroleum act in the UK, the US, Australia still has gaps. There will be gaps and some of them will be clarified or rectified with legislation. That is the normal legislative process. So for so me, as the more yeah. we use it, the more, the more we use it, it, the more we study it, mm. the more we look at how it is practically implemented. So in the PIA, there's a provision that 30% of the NNPC profit be allocated to develop development of frontier basins and that has generated a lot of controversy what do you make of that um it has uh, because i think that there might be um a misunderstanding of what frontier basins are 
um, the general consensus when I read the paper that I take away is that people think that this money is being allocated for exploration of oil and gas in the north where there is no oil and gas. So what is going on um, as opposed to the south? Now, uh, factually speaking, um, the, there are a number of frontier areas or frontier basins. I can tell you for a fact that Anambra has a frontier basin, right? There could be a frontier basin um, in Ondo State. There is one in Sokoto. So you so have even states that do not have oil. Correct. Have yes, basin. they can have because what you have, Nigeria has um, over 600 million TCF of gas, right? We've only discovered one third of that, about 200 TCF. So um, uh, a, a lawyer I admire had said something. He said, Nigeria is sitting on an ocean of gas. So there is still stupendous amounts of natural gas that has not been discovered. If you don't explore, you will never find. So a frontier area is that which has not been explored. Yes, a number of them are in the north, but a number of them are also in the south as well. So what this provision is saying is, is actually a kind of reinvestment. Because NMPC, which will become NMPC Limited, uh, is making provisions. There are also provisions for retain, retained uh, profits, uh, operating expenses, and then uh, remitting the rest to the government. So I think if there's an understanding of what a frontier area is and knowing that it's not just in the north of the country, uh, it might assuage some concern that people have. There's the issue of the commercialization of NNPC. That's something that you've alluded to. How's that going to work? Um, so the PIA provides that you will incorporate. So NNPC is going to become a private company registered under the Companies Act. So it will become a private company, and the PIA says this will happen in six months. At first, um, it will be equally owned by the Ministry of Petroleum and the Ministry of Finance. Subsequently, the idea is that uh, based on agreement with the government and approvals, its ownership will be open to the public. This could be either through privatization, through a bid process. There has been no specific mention of an IPO, uh, uh, initial public offering. That would be nice. Uh, I'll tell you why. Because it means every Nigerian could can, own, own a share. can own a share yeah. in Any. their national you know, that, that would be fantastic. Mm. What are the opportunities for lawyers in this, well, I don't know. Yeah, in the space? In the space, yeah. What, well, any new opportunities? I, I think it's an extension of already existing. Um, but give you an example. Before the PIA became law, clients were paying me to analyze it. Going forward. We're going to see a lot more of that. As a given. So every energy oil and gas lawyer, even those that are not oil and gas lawyers, are going to have clients saying, what does the PIB mean, right? Some might try and get it for free, but uh, I advise you to charge for it if you're a lawyer, <laughs> right? So there are going to be opportunities there. But then, um, remember what I said about infrastructure development because of the gas, right? I think, no, I, I, I actually believe that you're going to see in the next three to five years a marked improvement in infrastructure development. And a firm like Templars can handle all of it or even the big ones or the medium ones, there's going to be a plethora of work that is going to be spread around because of the PIA and so many projects coming on. So I'm, I'm not saying every uh, lawyer has uh, found their golden fleece, uh, but if there's anything that's going to generate more work, it's going to be the PIA.